precious bleeding side. Genesis chapter 20, continuing our story with Abraham, his faith. We talked last week about Sodom and Gomorrah and how Lot and Abraham were so different. Abraham had faith in the Lord and Lot warned the people of Sodom that God was going to send the punishment. Of course, like the world today, they're sitting in their rocking chairs, they're drinking their beers, they're sitting there watching TV, not paying attention to what's going on in the world. We see God's plan being fulfilled. Do you see it unfolding? Yes. Anybody? Yes. I mean, Jesus is coming back. Amen. And the, the, the road, the plan, the way is being set. And like the world today, they don't care. In Sodom, they didn't care. We move on to they left Sodom. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, major explosions, fire, whatever it was. Abraham saw all that, and he journeyed. This book I've listened to by Chuck Swindoll on the faith of Abraham, he always talks a little bit at the beginning of a chapter about certain things, and he said, he said, my mother taught me how to pray, so I still remember the first prayer my mother ever uttered. He said it was a nine-word prayer, but he said it changed my life, and it's impacted my life from then till now. It still does. And he said, she said, God help you if you ever do that again. <laughs> Think about that. The way he said it, she must have made it. God help you if you ever do that again. Maybe your parents told you the same thing. He was emphasizing the fact that Abraham trusted the Lord. We and he alluded back to when Abraham welcomed, welcomed the angels unaware and they invited, he invited them into his home. He's trusting God. Now, Abraham's not perfect. Of course, like we said last week, we saw the tragic part of Lot. What happened? Uh, this chapter is going to open with a statement that Abraham continues his journey. However, with that word however in there, this is happening, but his journey is going on however. He went to a place, the first place he went literally meant dry or heat, literally meant desert. It wasn't a very good place to be. Then he moved again, but uh, in verse 2 we find, uh, we'll, read the, we'll play the verses here in a minute, we find that he falls back into his scheming ways and he resorts to deception to protect himself from harm. He did that before. When we read our verses, you'll see we must be careful that what we do, what we say, how we act is going to impact us. We can't hide it from God. So the, just to go back. What happened before, and then we'll read, and you'll, you'll understand what happened with the Bimelech, and we'll explain why. He said before, Sarah wasn't his wife, to protect his face. He said, it's my sister. Well, you know, there are consequences, and we'll talk about that, when we do things the wrong way. And God wants to bless us, am I right? Yes. He, his desire is to bless us. We are blessed in this country. It is not the perfect place. Things aren't the best right now. Uh, you know, they're saying that there's a lumber shortage. But if you go to Menards and Lowe's, the wood is packed, piled higher in there than it's ever been before. If all the lumber yards are full, why is there a shortage? Have you tried to buy a piece of wood lately? I know Jim has. Barry told me the other day, two by fours are $11.63. I remember when there were 69 cents and a sale, 59 cents, $11 for one two by four. A sheet of plywood at Lowe's, three quarter sheet of plywood at Lowe's at, at Home Depot showed as $95, used to be $30. All this going on, your food prices are going up, gas prices are going up. It may not be the best thing right now, but we still live in the best country in the world. Yeah. And God still desires to bless us. And He will take care of us. He will take care of you. It may not be easy all the time. Show me the Bible where God said it's going to be easy straight. You can't find that. So, play our verses. Chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Leads you up to what would happen. Now you know.
to start now, huh? I'm pressing play, it's not playing. All right, Terry, you want to read? Of course, we had, we had, I had it back there, we had it set, so I know it was working. Blame it on the machine, okay, you said? Yeah. Okay. Does it have to? Switch over to on the monitor or something? No, we had set. If only this back here to read it, you know. We had set. I, we even tried it a couple times back there. Push play, it worked. Got it in this DVD player, the CD player. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the South Country and dwelt between the Yukon and Eastern Shore and sojourned in Gerard. And Abraham said, said of Sarah, his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man, for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Said, Be not unto me, she is my sister. And she, even she herself said, He is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands have I done this. And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live, and if thou restore her not, Know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Therefore Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all of his servants and told all these things in their ears, and the men were sore afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham and said unto him, What hast thou done to, unto us, and what have I offended thee, that thou hast brought me on and of my kingdom a great sin? Thou hast done deeds unto me that ought not be done. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What sawest thou, that thou hast done this thing? And Abraham said, Because I thought, surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will slay me for my wife's sake. And yet indeed she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. And it came to pass, when God caused me to wander from my father's house, that I said unto her, This is thy kindness, which thou shalt show unto me, at every place whither we shall come, say of me, he is my brother. And Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and gave them unto Abraham and restored him Sarah his wife. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before thee, dwell where it pleases thee. And unto Sarah he said, Behold, I have given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver. Behold, he is to thee a covering of the eyes unto all that are with thee, and all and with all other, thus she was reproved. So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservants, and they bare children. For the Lord hath fast closed up all the wounds of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Now well, that's a story to tell around the dinner table on Thanksgiving. So going back with the fact that he says Sarah's not his wife, well here's King Abimelech. Kings get what they want. The boss gets what they want. The person in charge, they get what they want. I want you to think about something. Sarah's 95 years old. The king wanted her for his wife. She must have been a looker. She, I'm serious. She must have still looked pretty good for 95 years old. You know, she put her profile out on the internet. He saw it. Uh, she must have looked pretty good. So he wanted, it was the custom that to, to, if you wanted a woman for your wife, and of course back then they took some of them took more more many wives, which it wasn't right in God's eyes, but it's the way the world was. 
to bring this woman in. And what happened was they would bring the woman into their household, and the woman we would put off by themselves for several months to find out if they were pregnant or not, to know if they had been had 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 sex with another man. But after several months, then they bring them out, they consummate the marriage, and they become married. Now we have a ceremony now, and we do a paper, and you got to sign the paper, and it's got to be legal through the courts and. All that, that's only because they want their money for the license. Uh, but that's the way it happened. And things would be traded. And you see through the thing, we'll go through it again, but God intervened. But first of all, believers do sin, verses 1 and 2. Abraham deceives Abimelech. Again, he ties some deception. Now, the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, right? That word all, we've talked about that so many times. There used to be... For you young people, there used to be a, a laundry soap called All. They said you could put, they named it All because they said you could wash before. You had to have a certain soap for cold water and a certain soap for hot water. Well, they said All works in both waters. Now people throw all things together and they throw all kinds of things and all kinds of di different kinds of soaps and all that. Um, what was the one that had the, the washcloths and the towels and everything? Breeze. 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 That's the only towels and washcloths. We, we're poor. That's how we got our towels, washcloths, and, and our, our hand towels, washcloths, and towels. They came in the boxes of breeze. That's, we were poor. That's how we got our towels. That's what they gave you. It enticed you to buy the, the laundry stove. All I could sin, I come short of the glory of God. I had a boss, I've told you, but I had a boss who said she had never sinned. I don't care who you are. I don't care... How good you think you are? We've all sinned, and we continue to sin. We deceive, we lie, we cheat, we do it little ways. We say white lies are okay, even Christians. Christians sin. Uh, but Genesis chapter 12, verse 13 says, Say, I pray thee that thou art my sister, and, it, and it, that it may be well with me for, for thy sake, and and my soul shall live because of thee. So Abraham, you know, he, he resorted to, to deception again, which, is any kind of lying okay with God? No. Not at all. <clears throat> so, he, he told a lie, gets him in this place, Abimelech wants his wife. He had told the Egyptians that Sarah was his, was his sister out of fear for his own life. Now, I understand. Um... That people do a lot of things. We resort to a lot of different things to save face, to save our lives. Um, we like to live, right? Did you wake up this morning? You're here. We like it when we wake up. We may not feel the best. We may have aches and pains the older you get. Um, we may... My legs this morning are sore. We went down to Charlestown yesterday. And they have a... Rose Island there, and it's a pretty good hike. It used to be a, I guess in, in the 30s there was a big amusement park there, and you could rent cottages along the along the river. And one sign said that they could bring food to you, and and if you had room service, it was 20 cents a person extra for room service. That was a lot of money back then. But there was a flood in 1937. There were places, and I'm talking. Probably if you went down the hill, I'm talking probably 25 feet down to the river, and there were places they had poles and, and things up here this high that had where the water came up and ruined the whole place. But it's a high. If you can't walk, don't do it. You go down, and you go down, and you go down, and you go down, and you go down to the island, and then when you go back up. It's a hill about this steep, and it's about a mile and a half to two miles. And according to our watch, and my watch said it was... 25 flights. If you went straight up 10 feet, that's 250 feet straight up. And you figure that angle. So yeah, my legs are sore today. We did a pretty good walk. We enjoyed it. There were a lot of people doing it. Randy took the kids down there in the spring, and he carried Kenzie halfway back up the hill. But see, I could hear Kenzie, I can't do this. I, got, I can't. And, you know, some, some stuff like that. I could, I could just picture it. Uh, but, but we enjoyed the, it was a nice day, beautiful day. Uh, my legs are sore today. I uh, may put some stuff on them later, but I enjoyed it. But the, God had to do something because of Abraham, and this brought judgment of God 
upon Pharaoh's house back when Pharaoh took Sarah. This happened before. Now Abimelech is the king, and now Sarah, he wants her to be his wife. It was the, the same thing. As I said, it was a custom for the king to do this. Um, even though she was over nine years old, she he thinks that she's free. She didn't have a wedding ring on. Of course, they probably didn't wear wedding rings back then. He just sees what's happening. Us in our lives. We have to be careful that we examine everything before we do it. Now, morals don't get us to heaven. Jesus does. Now, we have to have morals. Ulysses' girlfriend, her parents, her, is it her mom and dad or dad? They're, they're old-fashioned. He told us that he has to use, you have to ask permission every time you go out on a date, right? And you have to have a chaperone. That's that's how they are. Um, probably not a bad idea. I don't guess I agree with it totally, but we were in college. We didn't have to have chaperones, but we had to only go out on dates certain times. You were not allowed. We we're in college. You could not go out of the city limits unless you had a chaperone. If you were going to travel. Boy and a girl got traveled, they had to have a chaperone with them. If you went out of the city limits, you'd get written up and you could be ejected from school. And people thought there were kids who thought they could get away with it. Maggie and Connie were going to Wisconsin one time. Of course, they were from Wisconsin and they were all the way up in, in Illinois, way up. There used to be a place called the Dixie Truck Stop. Just north of Springfield, Illinois, somewhere in there, way in there. Off the beaten path, and I'm talking. Springfield was 220 miles from St. Louis. You're probably talking another 100, 150 miles from St. Louis there. They pulled into Dixie truck stop. And lo and behold, two couples, two single couples, BBC sticker on their car, right there in the same place. Connie was a supervisor. It was her obligation to turn them in. They all four got kicked out of school. We have as Christians... We have a moral obligation to serve God with all the integrity that we can. God wants us to be straight. Now, Abimelech had no idea that Sarah and Abraham were married. But like I said, he brought him in. So why would Abraham do this, as we said? He was like each of us. He still had a sinful nature. There's not a person in this building that is not capable of sinning. Now, we don't make it up, and we shouldn't make it a, what do I call it, a habit. We should make it a habit to sin, and I'm, we can start naming all kinds of things. But if you make it a habit of lying, that's wrong. If you make a habit of deceiving, that's wrong. God knows everything. He was walking by sight not by faith, and that's the problem we have. There's a difference in walk by faith and walk by sight. It is so easy for us to live out of the will of God when God wants us to be righteous. He wants us to be holy. When you got saved, you got changed. Am I right? The thought process has changed. Our ideas changed. Our lifestyles changed. When you got saved, you ought to desire to serve the Lord. We desire to go to church. We desire to learn the Word of God. Yes. The list goes on and on and on. Yes. Before we were saved, we didn't have that desire. Yes. The world doesn't understand that. Like I said, the world isn't looking for Jesus to come back. Yes. They think all these things are happening just because it's happening. We see events happening. I just saw a thing again yesterday. China, the Communist Party in China is really cracking down on Christians. But they're doing it all over the world. But we need to pray for these Christians. You've got to realize that one of these days, if the Lord doesn't come back, it could happen here. Yes. They could come and lock these doors. Yeah. They've done it before in America, and it won't stop them from coming again. Yeah. Better pray for our country. So then, when believers sin, the results are suffering. Verses 3 through 7, Abraham lost his character. Abimelech 
is the one with integrity, and Abraham is the one who's deceiving and lying to God, to everybody. Abimelech's not the Christian. Well, what's it say happened? Then God said, okay, your, your family's going to curse you, you can't have your children. It's a pretty good curse. We talk about every young girl wants to eventually get married. Their desire is to be like Cinderella. Have a have a have a marriage where where Prince Charming comes riding on a white horse, snatches her up, and they ride off and live happily ever after, no problems. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice to never have any problems in life? No money problems. Your children are perfect. I heard people say, when I have kids, my children are never going to do that. Guess what? They ain't their words. You never predict what children do. You don't know how they're going to act. Yes, you can teach them, and yes, the Bible says, train up a child the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. That's our job. That's our duty. But we can't predict what they're going to do. They're all different. We took different punishments for our two children. Abraham lost his testimony. So how can he talk with the Bibelic or others about God, the God of truth, when he just had proven himself to be a liar by what he did? It's like us standing there with the beer in our hands and telling somebody else you shouldn't drink beer as a Christian. Parents smoke cigarettes and tell their kids, don't do this. I remember my looking at my dad and saying, well, you're doing it. Yeah, but it's, don't do it. My dad knew. He started it. Him and his brother both started smoking when they were about 12 years old. And my dad smoked. He got saved. And my dad smoked about a year before he died. A year or two before he died. He knew his heart was giving him problems. But he quit. But he knew what it would do. I told you before I got saved, me and my friend bought a pack of cigarettes and we didn't even smoke together in the first few days because we were thought we were cool. Everybody else at school was smoking. Oh, yeah. Everybody else in high school, they were smoking and we thought we could be cool too, you know. They're all, all the rest of them. Were and then after we, we decided that's not for us, I don't even know what kind of cigarettes it was, it doesn't matter, we threw it away. We pulled our money together and probably, I remember my brother complained when cigarettes went up to 50 cents a pack. In some places of 10, 12 dollars. What a waste of money. But we threw it away. And then as I watched other kids, when it was five degrees outside and it was below zero at lunchtime, they had to go outside to smoke cigarettes in the smoking area. Stand out there and freeze so you get a cigarette. I'm glad I didn't starve. But sin, it can get a hold of us. Abraham lost his testimony, he lost his ministry. Chuck Swindoll in his book, he said, when he got saved, him and his wife, he went, he was talking about when he went in the he was in the Marines. He had to go over to Japan. And he said, as soon as he got in the barracks, he got bombarded. Guys started telling him where the prostitutes were, told him where the alcohol was, they told him where, even back then, told him where to get drugs. He got bombarded. He said, I had to make a decision. That I was going to be faithful to Cynthia, which is his wife's name, of course, and, and his grandkids call him Poppy. Uh, I'd be faithful to Cynthia. I could be faithful to my wife and not give in to temptation because he said, at some point, I'm going to have to face her. If I do sin, I'm going to have to face her and tell her. And he said, at that time, we didn't know what kind of ministry we were going to have. Now he went on, of course, he's written a lot of books, he's on the radio, he pastored a church in California for years, and now he's down at Dallas Theological Seminary, and that's in Dallas. Um, but he served the Lord. He said we have to do it with integrity. Instead of being a source of, of blessing, he was the cause of judgment to Bimelech's family. No babies, as we said, were to be born during this time. Genesis 20:18 says, for the Lord had fast closed up the wombs of the house of Abimelech. Now that's a pretty good judgment. To not let you have any children. It was because of Abraham's sin. See, when 
I said, boy, what a story around the table. What do you tell your children later? When a child of God gets out of the will of God, he disciplines, the discipline of God usually follows. You know, my wife has told, I've heard her tell people all through the years, that when God whoops you, you know you had a whooping. And she says, you don't want God to whoop. Belts, we got used on us. Hands. I told you I bought that Hot Wheels track and I wish I'd never bought Hot Wheels. Because I found out that those two foot pieces of track make a good weapon on the back side of your body. They make a good belt. Now, my mom worked for Head Start for years in Florida. And if somebody did that and we told her, she said, I know. She had somebody did that to their children today. She turned them in and have arrested We were abused. See how we turned out? We were abused. God gets us to Abraham tempted God. So through this deception, he forced God to intervene. Miraculously, Abimelech would have, as the word said, as said, as, as read it, innocently takes Sarah as his wife. It wasn't, he didn't know. So the next thing is, real quickly, believers can be forgiven. We're going to sin, but see what it's, i got to know, believers can be forgiven and restored. You see, all these shows on TV where they restore houses, where they, where they flip houses. Larry, we saw one for you guys yesterday. It had collapsed and the roof was at ground level, that'd be a fixer upper. <laughs> but they take these homes and they go in and they fix everything up. I've seen several of them that Larry and Barry worked on and done. Total transformation. Some of you wouldn't know what, and if you didn't have pictures, you didn't know what it looked like before. Well, the same with Christians. When we got saved, we had to be restored. Why? Sin breaks the fellowship with God, right? And that sin had that sin stopped us from fellowship with God. Well, that fellowship had to be restored. Like a couple or like friends or whoever they are, something happens between them, they get in a squabble and they have to go and say, you know what, I'm sorry. I apologize for what I did. Let's restore the relationship. Let's put it back to where it was. Let's be friends again. Kids do that. They fight with each other, and the parents, while the parents are on the porch fighting with each other, the kids are in the yard playing with each other again. That's what happens. And Bimelech, um, you know, he confronts and rebukes Abraham, verses 8 through 10. So how embarrassing this must have been for Abraham and Sarah. You know, some people are only upset about sin about what they do wrong if they get caught. They're not upset about what they did. They're upset about the fact that I got caught got to pay the consequences. Be honest with me. Did anybody here ever get a spanking in the school? Raise your hand if you ever got a spanking in school. Jim, you, you got spanking? <laughs> not Jim. Anybody else? Anybody else did it? Well, you still, you got, you got, you got this one. I got it twice, two times. Two different grades. I didn't deserve either one. Um, I did. Um, there has to be discipline. If you don't have the discipline, there's problems. Abraham makes excuses for his sin, verses 11 to 13. He says it was because of fear, and that okayed it. Fear is a very difficult thing to overcome sometimes. Every one of us are afraid of different things. I like, I've ridden 70 different roller coasters. One in Texas, Six Flags, and if you saw it, the, it stopped all of a sudden. It took them an hour and a half to get the people off of it. Um, Karen, was it you that said, I think Karen said one time they had friends in Kentucky Kings up there. They used to have a loop roller coaster. Some other one of her friends got stuck on that thing. It's stuck upside down. 
I like roller coasters. The faster, the better. One of these days, I'll get on one and get so sick I won't be able to make it. But until that happens, I'm gonna. If I get a chance, I'll ride another. But I've ridden 70, 70 different roller coasters. But I don't like Ferris wheels. Now the big ones, the big wheels that are closed in, I don't care about those. But the Ferris wheel, the seats swing back and forth. I've been had fear of those since the first time I rode one. I'd rather not ride a Ferris wheel. Now, like I said, the big ones that went down to Kentucky King, huge, 150 feet tall, whatever it is, I'll ride those, no problem. I'll ride all those roller coasters that go upside down. They hang you out below the track. I've ridden the ones going backwards, standing up, sitting down. I've ridden them all. I rode one that you sit in the car while you're on the track, the whole car spins around. So you don't, you're spinning around this way and riding on the roller coaster, and you're going down hills and everything, you don't know where you are. That's fun. How many of you don't think that would be fun? But don't get me, don't try, I, I'll ride on it probably. But I just don't like the Ferris wheels. Jim doesn't like snakes and has to go in the yard and kill the snakes. <laughs> but if you see a mouse, oh boy, Ann's not on top of the chair, she's upstairs. She don't like, she don't like the mice. We all have something and fear is big. But he then tries to convince Abimelech that he really wasn't lying. Then he says, she's my half-sister. At this point, Abimelech isn't responding. So then Abraham, he apparently did confess. He repented of his sin. He later prayed for Abimelech. And what does God do? We said we had to be restored. God goes back and says, okay. I'll remove the judgment from Abimelech, and he agrees with Abimelech, gives him, talks to him in a dream. He says, listen, you know, Abimelech said, wait a minute, I didn't really know. I was deceived, and God said, I understand. He said, I'm trying to protect you. You see, God loves everyone. People try to say, oh, you Christians. Abimelech wasn't a Christian. God still protected him. God still loved him. And like Larry said, if God can raise us from the dead, imagine what, you know, what can he do for us when we're alive? You know, he loves us so much. He loves us with a love that we can't, yeah, you know, I've said it before, I don't think the world can truly know the meaning of love like Christians can. Because when God's love comes in us, it inundates us, it comes over us, it's, it, it's through our bodies. It, it, it saturates our lives. It makes us want to serve Him. It makes us want to live for Him. It makes us want to do what we can for Him. It's just totally different than what the world says is love. Yeah, yeah there's, the world has love for a lot of things. Sarah was returned to Abraham along with presents. A thousand pieces of silver, and that was common back then. When you had a wife, when you wanted a wife, you would trade for them. You would, I'll give you two donkeys and a cattle and a cow for what? And they do that in the Middle East now, even now. They do it as children. Unfortunately, they take children as a bride. I'm talking 10, 11, 12 year old girls. It's sad. That's where their custom says they can do. Then Abraham was able to be a blessing to Abimelech after all. Perhaps God includes his this account to help us to become a self-righteous group of people. You know, Lot's end was tragic. Even a man who was a friend of God can fail. God never defended Abraham for deceiving him in sin, but he defended Abraham his person. God cannot okay sin. But I guarantee you, if you're going to be in the court of justice, 
you want Jesus to be your lawyer. Now Satan does that to us. He tries to remind us that we're sinners, that we're going to fall, that we're going to fail, that we're going to be, that we are nothing. But there's going to come a judgment as we close real quick. There's going to be a courtroom one day where Satan is going to have to stand in front of the God of the universe. And there's a song, a ballad song called The Judgment. Most of you have heard it. We've had a couple groups here sing it over the years. I love the song to me. One of these days, Satan is going to have to stand in this courtroom and he's going to have to look at God in the face and he will have to admit that he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Because the Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And Satan is going to have to look at that judge, that God on his judgment seat, and he's going to have to admit that he is the God of the world and not Satan himself. And then God is going to take death and hell and the Antichrist and the devil and he's going to cast them in the lake of fire. Amen. And from then on, we're going to have a perfect world. No, it's not perfect now. We're just going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And it says, all things are passed away, for behold, all things become what? Yeah. New. And as we close, we all like new things. We go to the store and we see these new shiny shoes and we got to have them. We gotta have this new dress. <clears throat> we gotta have these new pair of glasses. We gotta have this new hat. Where's well, a tie that I don't have? I just I can't I can't go another day without it. I gotta have it. You wear it twice and put it back in the clothes. I've got about 50 ties, I've got a rack that slides out, and that's I pull them out and try to rotate them. I try not to wear them. I don't want to bore you guys the same tie. I try to rotate them out. All different colors and all different. We see something we got to have. We can't do without it. When I see something that's on the shelf that says spicy, I try to learn that what, they, what they call spicy or hot. Somebody don't know what hot is. Well, I like the scorpion peppers. We went to Buffalo Wild Wings last week, and I got the hottest. They got scorpion wings right now, and I got some. They were good. Was I sweating? Yeah. Did I drink some water? Yeah. But they was good. They tell you these peanuts are hot. You listen to me. But you, you like a little spicy, don't you? you said you like little spicy. But Connie probably wouldn't. She'd probably say they're way too hot for me. Anne would say they're way too hot. But that's the same thing I say. It says it's a spicy sausage. I'll buy it. Eh. Randy does the same thing. And if he doesn't like it, he brought me some alligator sausage one time. Some alligator jerky. He said, I don't like this. You can have it. It was pretty good. Anyway, life, you have to trust God. We're tempted, but we have to serve the Lord. We have to stand for what's right. Because outside these walls, all around us, 360 degrees, wherever you live, whatever you do, wherever you work, there are people without Jesus. And people need the Lord. Let's stand with heads bowed and eyes closed. We're going to play a song today. We're going to sing. The devil tries to deceive us. One of these days, he's going to be cast in the lake of fire. We're going to have a perfect world. But until then, we have to stand up, stand up for Jesus. What a perfect song today. You know, God works. He knows what we need. I didn't tell Anne what the message was. Then when she sent me the words, I thought, what a perfect song. Abraham has to stand up for the Lord. We have to stand up for stand up for Jesus. Maybe you're here today, maybe you're watching by video, and you've never accepted Jesus as your own personal Savior. You can do that right now. All you have to do is say, Lord, save me. I, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I want you to come into my heart and cleanse me, and I want to serve you. That's all it takes. Christian, let's serve the Lord with everything we have. Let's make it a act with the Lord. Maybe we're not doing what we can. Let's do more. Father, we want you to use us in a way that is even unexplainable. 
We want you to put people in our path that we can be a witness to. And may we as Christians stand strong. Yes, it's easy to do things out of the ordinary to save face, to save our lives. But remind us that you're in charge of all things, that you have us under your wing, and that you will protect us. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for this Memorial Day. Thank you, Father. As we close, I want to thank you once again on behalf of all of us of how we got to this place of men and women who have given their lives, sacrificed their lives, and we remember them today. Those who are serving around our world, who are protecting our country, protecting our world, may they be blessed today. Remind us, Lord, what this weekend's about. To remember and never forget. And all God's people say.